Okay, so welcome everyone uh, here in the room and also uh, those watching us from home as we are uh, live on webcast. Um, and welcome to this press conference about enabling trade for uh, Mexico. Uh, I am Peter Vanham, I'm the media lead here at the World Economic Forum. And with me are three distinguished guests. There's one uh, unfortunate thing, which is this is an all-male panel. So we'll, we'll work on that next time. Yes. But uh, they are experts. Uh, on my left side is uh, Christian Rodriguez Cifele. Um, he's a trade expert here at the World Economic Forum. And he'll be telling us a little bit more about where we are in terms of trade, international trade, and also uh, that involving Mexico. Very hot topic. Uh, next to him is Rodrigo Rubio. Uh, Rodrigo okay. Rubio, uh, the managing director, I think, from yes. Bain and Company in Mexico. And then we have Francisco Gonzalez Diaz, um, who is the CEO of ProMexico uh, and who was so kind to make some last minute time in his agenda to join us uh, in this press conference. Um, we'll be keeping it brief uh, to about 20 minutes. Um, if you have any questions afterwards, uh, I'm sure uh, we'll make some time outside of the room uh, because here uh, we'll have a next session starting at 6.15. Um, so let me kick off uh, and let me start uh, with Christian. So we're here to talk about uh, trade that involves Mexico, uh, uh, Christian. Um, of course, trade is a topic that is uh, hot internationally. Uh, there's a, a number of big trade agreements being negotiated and, and it remains uncertain whether they will be ratified or not. And that has been also the way in which uh, trade has, has developed in uh, the larger part of the 90s and, and maybe the years of 2000. Is that is something is that something you continue to uh, you expect to continue, or do you see more advantages from uh, specific trade measures as we will be talking about here for uh, Mexico? Thank you, Peter. Uh, I believe I believe both actually. I think it's uh, countries uh, had focused for a long time. I think on just playing the big picture, enhancing the, the World Trade Organization. Big trade agreements you mentioned, uh, I'm sure you, you referred to NAFTA, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is being enacted right now, and others. Uh, but I think, uh, I, I think it's also very important to focus on specific measures and specific helps that you can, uh, you, you can develop to actually uh, uh, untangle trade barriers. And I think this, is, this, exam this, this project is, is, a very, is a very, very good example. Today, economic growth have become, I think, so complex that really you need to seek for specific solutions to, to really to really solve many of those problems. I think you, you choose a specific area, you, you deep dive on that area, such as this project has done, and then you look for specific fixes. Uh, I think this is, this is really uh, where frameworks such as the Enabling Trade Initiative from the World Economic Forum uh, excels. Uh, what we do here in this initiative is that we detect businesses which are a little bit on the verge of being able to be competitive internationally, and we try to give them the final push. And that's why I think, in particular, in this study, we refer to, to, to a very specific, uh, specific uh, sector of the economy, uh, which were medical devices in Mexico. And just to bring some numbers to this, uh, the, 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 the report uh, detected that in Mexico could achieve additional market access, market share growth of 10 to 20 percent on a market which is on a world market which is 7.7 .7 billion dollars. So you put numbers to that, and you realize it's very, very, very important. Uh, a little going a little bit broader, also uh, continuing on trade facilities. I think that the, the, the OECD reports have mentioned that actually if the trade facilitation agreement of the World Trade Organization is enacted, I think, uh, uh, well, it says that actually the cost of trade will be lower than around 15%. And WTO studies have said that 20 million new jobs could be created. So also very important and another area which, where the forum is working through the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation. That, I think, addresses the first part of your question. However, sure. you also mentioned about trade agreements, World Trade Organization, bigger picture, and bigger framework. And I think an effective rules-based framework on international trade is of the essence and is something the World Economic Forum is absolutely committed to. Um, in such an interconnected world as today, I think it is very important to have clear international rules to fight against I think an increasing protectionism that we are seeing. I mean, it's, it's obvious the anti-trade rhetoric that you see, for example, in the campaign in the United States from both parties, actually. Uh, things happening in Europe and elsewhere. And actually, there's a, there are very serious studies that have said that the trade protectionist measures applied by governments since the 2009 financial crisis have, have actually increased threefold. So there's definitely protectionism. And protectionism is not good for business. 
is not good for developing countries, it's not good for anyone, sure. because it restricts free flow of goods. Yep. So that I think that I think is something where the forum is very committed to keep up to keep those those borders open. Thank you. And um, of course, uh, what what you say is, is something that resonates with with a lot of people who are experts in this matter, and they will see the clear benefits that trade brings, usually uh, both uh, for the importing, the exporting country, or basically across the board. Yeah. Um, uh, what has been difficult, and maybe why the rhetoric uh, has not really been um, accessible for the public, or many people don't really believe in, in it anymore, is because they don't see the tangible results of it. And for this, I wanted to ask uh, Rodrigo, because you've been working on this specific case, uh, and, and, and instead of looking at a whole economy, uh, uh, you've done a deep dive into one very specific industry where you can really measure uh, what uh, possible results can be. And, and what I would like to ask you is uh, perhaps uh, first and foremost, what have you detected uh, when it comes to this specific industry uh, and the production and the export uh, for Mexico? Uh, we mentioned it was in this case um, uh, the medical device industry. Uh, so what specific barriers exist? What can you do about it? And what is then the end result uh, of taking such measure measures? Absolutely, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, uh, you know, Thank you to the World Commerce Forum for the opportunity to partner in such an important topic. A big thank you and a big recognition to the government of Mexico, uh, who actually not just allowed us to the work, but actually worked very, very much on this specific uh, study. As, as Christian started, I mean, the, the main important framework for this was we need to go beyond uh, rate reduction to the next phase of, of trade facilitation that is kind of non-rate related, things like access, infrastructure, uh, border crossing facilitation and the general business environment. We believe strongly, and I think we share that belief with the World Economic Forum, that in order, I mean, these, these barriers exist for a reason. In order to address them, uh, rather than take a broad look at generic topics across the, across the economy, it's better to take these tipping point industries, industries that are very close to being competitive, and look at the whole ecosystem across them to identify things you can pragmatically do, right? And uh, oftentimes what needs to be done, and I think Francisco will talk about this soon, right, are measures that need to cross boundaries between government entities and oftentimes actually involve industry and, and government collaboration. So being specific on an industry we think is very important. We chose uh, together with the government of Mexico to, to work on medical devices because there was a feeling that this was Truly, an industry was close to the tipping point. You know, so Mexico already is a, a relatively important exporter, but there was a feeling that there could be more done. And so we looked at it, again, beyond access. So yes, we have NAFTA. We have relatively low uh, rates for trade between Mexico and the US, aranceles, right, between Mexico and the US. Uh, but what else is keeping us from, from really developing that, not just to the US, but the world, but the export market in Mexico? And so uh, we looked at market access. Uh, beyond this, and found that um, a lot of the spend, we are not really taking advantage of our big, relatively big local market. So, for an exporter to set up business in Mexico, right, there's the opportunity to do export, but a local market is always a good anchor. It's important for them. It actually attracts, you know, the smaller and medium business companies that provide inputs to them to the market, and despite actually a lot of progress, we still have about two times the length of typical innovation of medical devices from, you know, say, world benchmarks, which is re around you know, six to eight months from you know, the product is approved to the product is available to patients. In, the, you know, in our public sector uh, health services in Mexico, we're still closer to two years than to eight months. So that's, eight you know, months. that hinders a bit the access to the local market. Uh, we have actually done a lot of progress in bioequivalence agreements, actually mostly on the importing side. So Mexico has been a very good trade citizen, if you will, and the citizens of Mexico take advantage of having available all these products. But the bioequivalency network of agreements is not as strong on the export side. So there's a little bit of, that's the access finding, you will, or the summary of some. Then you look at border crossing, and again, the SAT has done a lot of that's already done a lot of work in kind of trying to standardize, simplify these crossings, but because there's still, um, it's still in implementation and there's still a lot of stages at, uh, that 
things need to go through at the border and the incoming side and the outgoing side that are not necessarily coordinated. Again, the, the importance of looking at this, cross, it costs about two to three times more to move a container across the Mexico border than it takes in kind of benchmark markets like you know Hong Kong or something. So just crossing the border is you know three hundred dollars for the box instead of a hundred, which would be typical, right? Uh, infrastructure and particularly road infrastructure in Mexico. So the cost uh, and the time that it takes to move these things around the country is also significantly more expensive. We estimate it probably increases the cost of something sourced from Mexico, five to 10%. Uh, and again, when you bring this all together, so again, we've done a lot of progress, but there's still you know, better access, better border crossing processes, better infrastructure uh, that would give us around a 10% better cost position and a more attractive local market. That's where the you know, roughly $1 billion estimate of additional exports would be coming from. Well, yeah. um, so that's very tangible if you look at, uh, at possible results that can come out of it. Um, uh, now, what I find so interesting about what you say is that in, in effect, what's hindering uh, uh, export from uh, Mexico to, for example, the United States, its biggest neighbor, um, is actually perhaps more internal barriers uh, rather than a formal trade barrier at the border. Yes. Um, and, and that's interesting, and, and, and we, we don't have to go too much into politics and rhetorics, but perhaps, uh, Mr. Gonzalez Diaz, uh, I should ask you, because I find that such an interesting contrast when you have on one side of the border somebody who says, uh, I want to build a wall uh, with uh, Mexico, and on the other side of the wall, as a matter of fact, you have, oh, at, the, at the other side of the border, you have actually somebody who, who says, no, I'm going to destroy a barrier. I'm going to destroy a wall. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can take down some trade walls uh, between Mexico and US, and that's going to be much easier uh, than for anyone else to build an additional uh, barrier. Um, is that a fair assessment? Is it fair to say that it's more likely for you to take down a few barriers? Uh, of course. Uh, Let me thank you that, um, tell you that Mexico has been committed to competitiveness of the Mexican market, of the Mexican economy. And in this sense, we have enrolled many FTAs, many uh, free trade agreements, but also a very one important FTA, the facilitation uh, of trade agreement of Bali. We, it was just approved uh, by the Senate in Mexico, and we're moving on. We really are committed into not only lowering uh, the different uh, taxes and lowering the, let's say so, the quantitative issues, but also the qualitative ones. For example, we are uh, now very committed, as Rodrigo said, with the certification of an authorization in the pharmaceutical level, at the pharmaceutical level. Yes, it sounds more like import, but it was the decision to start with the pharmaceuticals and not with the medical devices. This is the second step, and really, you have really x-rayed the, the system very, very good, and we are working on that, and uh, the implementation will be in the next uh, year, and we're uh, really not only ho uh, hoping that this will be a success, we know that this will be a success because also the Pan American uh, Health System organization already approved many of the ways of doing things in Mexico. Then this will be easier rather than the one we had with the pharmaceutical that took uh, almost two years. Also in customs and border issues, we're developing new systems. And this is something that's happening. We're working now, for example, with the US there was a law that it was forbidden for uh, foreigners to bring uh, weapons into Mexico. And it was a must for the customs uh, department in the US. Also for the Mexican aduanas, it was important to have the same security issues at the other side. Now we are jointly combining our efforts, customs, US customs in Mexico, Mexican uh, customs in the US, and this is bringing also uh, really, really agile times for trade. We're still implementing this. Of course, this is not at the 100% level, but it, it's working. We are also in the, the one of the other findings that, that we had at, <coughs> sorry, at the end-to-end -end value chain case that we are considering, for example, implementing new suppliers. The value chain is needed, and we have to develop Mexicans, yes, but also to bring more <coughs> Sorry, more and more. Uh, thank you. More and more uh, uh, 
uh, suppliers from all uh, over the world. And how do we develop this? With roadmaps. We know precisely what kind of materials are needed for the development of medical devices. This is not something that you go to the world and say, please invest in Mexico. No, you go with a target that you say, this kind of company is the one we need in Mexico. Yeah. Finally, this is also something very important. It's one of the findings that, that you, you had. is a part of bidding. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, it's really transparent, but it's really complicated. We have also to ease in the way of doing this bid, uh, the, the bid system yep. for Mexico. It's really transparent, but it's really baroque. And we have to change this. And we are also working on that. This one, the last one, is something that we must do. The other one is something that we have been developing in the past years. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and that's very clear. And, and, and thank you also <coughs> to talk about a few different industries and a do, few different initiatives you've been taking uh, in this regard. Um, I, I know that we uh, have to wrap up soon, but I wanted to see if there's perhaps uh, one question from the audience. Uh, if not, uh, I will ask one additional question myself because I find it's quite interesting. Um, so let's see if there's any uh, questions for uh, any of the panelists here. Um, it's okay. Um, so the question that I uh, wanted to ask uh, is now we've really zoomed in uh, to, uh, let's say, what's what can be improved in the case of Mexico and in the case of the medical device industry? And then you say there's potential to uh, in, uh, take away some trade barriers and to have a better cost position. Um, having this, does that also immediately imply, and I don't really know who's best uh, place to answer this question, but uh, improving this on Mexico's side, does that immediately imply that other countries, the ones to which is being exported, are also better off because of it? Because that's often one of the questions that, that you get. Is there anyone who, who wants to take on that question? I can take a start and then, and then sure. maybe, maybe pass on. I think you, you, you basically refer to the concept of a global value chain. Mm -hmm. sure. And I think it's, it, it's, it's definitely fundamental. And the way that value chains work and develop is that, I mean, sure, if you can make them work at the same time everywhere, fantastic, right? But that is the same thing as believing you're going to achieve the multilateral WTO agreement. <laughs> Not always so easy, you know. The TPP takes you three years. I'm sorry, six years. Uh, the Doha round, what, 15 already? So I just make that comparison to also if you're saying you're going to lower the standards at some particular level, and I think that's what I, I think CEO Gonzalez Diaz mentioned it with the Bali agreement, the WTO trade facilitation agreement, that that creates a great threshold. But definitely, at least from the World Economic Forum side, what we're doing is we're definitely going beyond that. Because what you've mentioned is definitely is, is to, in, to prepare and to have readiness from the country to be at the highest level. Someone mentioned Hong Kong, Singapore, the benchmarks, right? So that's, what, that, that's definitely what you want to do, where you want to place yourself, where you want to go. If you can do it unilaterally, fantastic. That's exactly. only going to benefit you. But of course, that, that is, going to, is going to raise the playing field for the rest of the world. So sure. definitely, I think, I think you're right. I think you need to go country by country, and what you can do together, great, but you need champions. Yeah. Okay. Well, I see a lot of nodding here, and if you want to uh, finalize, think, perhaps. Yeah, just one additional thought. I think, despite the fact that we believe, that, again, looking at a specific industry is very powerful as a way to highlight things, most of the things you need to do will actually benefit other industries that are related in the country. And in the end, this is all about, you know, what are com industries at the tipping point? It's industries that are almost competitive, but not quite, right? And frankly, only almost competitive is not good enough you need to be competitive, right? So you need to be world-class competitive to be an export platform. Uh, and that's how, you know, we think you, you look at this, you improve this. Uh, yeah, and competition is, is tough, right? Mm -hmm. you'll, you're never done. You'll get competitive now, and then someone else will try and outcompete you, you, and then you, you'll catch up again. Uh, Very Mr. fast. Gonzalez, yes. Uh, if you build thought. the barrier, you will uh, grow a company that is not competitive inside of your country. Mm -hmm. If you throw this barrier down, then you will have really the real competitiveness of the country in your country, of the world in your country. Then the idea is to really take away all kinds of barriers and to have the best of the best in your country. Okay. And with that, uh, I want to thank you all for coming here today. And thanks uh, uh, for making it to the press conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you.